It's the proudest day in the history of the Rimutaka Incline, as the coupling up of the fell brake van becomes a royal occasion. The Duke and the Inspector, both ex-navalmen, agree that brake vans are a stand-in for anchors, and they're needed on this gradient, the steepest in New Zealand. Reporters note it's the first and last time a reigning sovereign will use this route. The 76-year-old Fell Railway will be no more when the Rimutaka Tunnel is completed. Overseas pressmen attached to the Royal Entourage stage a climb down at Cross Creek during the 10-minute changeover of engines. All too soon, the Queen is on her way again, a charming figure they will never forget. Through the voice of Godfrey Talbot, listeners in England reach the Waira Rapa with the Royal Train. In Masterton Park, farmers and townsfolk combine to show their enthusiasm as the Queen walks to the dais with the Mayor, Mr. E.G. Coddington. She is the guest of men and women skilled in the crafts of town and country alike, but above all with their roots deep in the Waira Rapa soil. The honour of presenting a bouquet goes to 17-year-old Annette Kelty, the only Queen's Guide in Wellington Province. It's North Island's last presentation. Back to Wellington to prepare for her flight to Blenheim with the rugged grandeur of the Rimutakas as background to her last overland drive. The Queen's departure will leave every city from Auckland to Wellington with a feeling of emptiness, but South Island's joy replaces North Island's sadness. The Royal Plane heads past Wellington towards Cook Strait. And so Blenheim, first of 17 stops the royal couple are to make in the South Island. Mr. W.A. Bodkin, minister in attendance, introduces the mayor, Mr. E.P. Meachin. It's a visit which the pressing demands of the tour cut all too short. Below are places steeped in New Zealand's history. Almost to the day, 184 years ago, Captain Cook came to these sounds to make his first landing in the South Island. Nelson, named after England's greatest sea captain, and with every street a memory of him, welcomes its royal visitors en masse. Exuberance flows from cathedral steps into Trafalgar Street, a warm personal meeting between the people and their sovereign in an atmosphere of mutual delight. Main outlet for the Buller coal fields, Westport has made up its mind to give the royal couple the sort of welcome that coal mining communities know how to put on. There they are for every man jack to see. Bless them. A magnificent panorama of alpine splendor is Westland's greeting. Deep valleys, snow-clad heights, the clean-cut bed of the Grey River. To this wonderland of Westland, Hokitika Airport is their key. Ten golden minutes, more rare than even Hokitika's memories can match. Friendly minutes, whose value time will ever increase. A real coaster's welcome is given by Greymouth. As escorted by Mr. F.W. Bailey, the mayor, the royal visitors make their way through the crowds in Tainui Street. Greymouth's present is a beautifully bound volume of hand-painted Westland scenes, and the scenes she will remember are not only in books. Though the coast and its warm hearts are left behind her, the loveliness of Westland will be with the Queen until she reaches the Alps. Lake Brunner in Mare Moana Kotuku, the Sea of Herons.
The river Taramakau, swift flowing when swollen by alpine snows, is within sight until the train nears Otira, at the western end of the Commonwealth's longest railway tunnel. Here, steam gives way to electricity for the trip under the Alps. The Royal Cipher will be theirs until steam takes over again beyond the five and a quarter mile tunnel. And so, farewell to Westland. After the tunnel, the long descent to the plains of Canterbury will commence. It's a journey which will take the Queen through a maze of tussock-clad hills and past the gorge of the Waimakariri River as it snakes through mountain defiles. People wait in their thousands. Christchurch salutes the Queen. The formal ceremonies proceed. 99 leaders of the civic life of the city are presented by the Mayor, Mr. R. M. McFarlane. Watching every gesture of Her Majesty are 30,000 joyful faces. There's none of that traditional reserve about Christchurch as the mayor calls for cheers. The welfare of her disabled ex-servicemen is always in the thoughts of the Queen, and the excellence of handloom work in the vocational training center at Rickerton delights her. Colonel J. Murphy, who is showing her round, has already told her of the 600 men who have left these workshops re-equipped for life. With so much to talk about among former comrades, all find the time too short. English willows by a river called the Avon. Where else could the royal couple feel more at home? They've come to the cathedral for evensong. Received by the Bishop of Christchurch, they walk husband and wife to worship with their people. The scene changes to one which calls to mind the matured beauty of England. On the velvety turf of the archery lawn in the Botanic Gardens, 4,000 guests from all parts of North Canterbury gather to meet the Queen. Wearing a full-skirted dress of pale mushroom pink lace with square neck bodice softly folded and a hat of white organdy petals, the Queen is a vision of gracefulness. Nothing pleases her more than to know that 2,000 of those present are townsfolk who secured their invitations by way of a public ballot. It is the biggest social event of all time for Christchurch. <laughs> 